everyone and welcome back to Subnautica. This is episode two. Last time we crash landed and we've just been kind of doing our best at this point uh, to really just figure out what the hell is going on and uh, survive on an ocean planet. Uh, it's been it's very fun, actually. I really enjoyed the, the first episode of uh, exploring around and getting, getting to know the place. We've We've built some things. We've got some radiation suits. We can we can glide around. We've got a radiation helmet. There's there's a bunch. Um, we what's really good is we do have a log. So if it's been some time, you can jump back in and be like, "What is going on?" Um, which is really cool. We sort of ended the last episode um, heading across to uh, a distress signal. And we beat uh, like a predator fish to death uh, because we are the, the new predator of these seas. Um, and we're just really going to kind of continue on this trail and, and see what happens. So uh, this was the LifePod 17 that we checked out. Uh, we're essentially like really kind of like in a sequence of I think what we got to do is just keep building until you build bigger and better things and then maybe we'll be able to get off of this uh get off of this place but i think for now we're going to throw ourselves back into the ocean get used to what we have to do um and and see what happens i it, it's been a just a, like a little bit of time since the first episode because um i did intend to start the series on the channel uh a little bit earlier um but I had to change up my schedule a little bit. So I kind of pushed it back and then I was like, I'll, I'll wait and not record too far ahead. So it has been like a, a little bit of time since I last played. Uh, so we'll get get ourselves back into the swing of things. But I've been really enjoying it. It's a beautiful game. Uh, the exploration seems fun. Um, sort of like the, the exploration and learning things is fun. It, the water looks really great. Like this is a, a very a visually, visually stunning experience too. Now I think if I remember correctly, when we went to this life pod, we were given. Um, I think we unlocked the ability to make something, but we were also given um, some information as well. Um, we were also given some information. Um, we're on day five, so we've been we've been pretty good. We've been pretty good. I think we unlocked a, a blueprint that allowed us to make like a um, something like large mobile vehicle bay. Oh, the sea moth. That's what I'm talking about. The sea moth. We can uh, in the scanner room as well. We're finding pieces for those. It looks like we'll be able to do like some base building stuff from what you can see in here. Like we've got base pieces that you can make like compartments uh, that seem like not too expensive. Uh, the Seamoth looks like a nice little submersible vehicle. So we can uh, maybe go a little bit deeper. Uh, I keep wanting to press escape to get out of the, <laughs> the little PDA and forget that I just have to press tab. So I will accidentally pause the game a lot. Um, I need to remember how everything works. There we go. Got me, got me flashlight. If I get me sea glider out, that's a little bit more for the light. We're gonna head back around this life pod area and see if maybe I can. Um... Oh Jesus! I'm being attacked. Hold on. Uh, head back over to this life pod cluster um, and see if we can get any more leads on what's going on. The days do move very fast as well. The day and night cycle is pretty crazy. What's over here? scans show a nearby cave entrance depth 90 meters leading to an unknown environmental biome right okay so i think this was the thing when we came over here last time and we were kind of very much overwhelmed and we were, and we were saying that we needed to 
reassess our situation before we came down here. I needed to build some stuff. Whoa! I needed to assess my resources. Wow. So we built a, a better oxygen tank as well. Damn. Okay. In this cave support a microcosm of unique, possibly predatory life forms. Oh, possibly predatory. An artificial structure somewhere in the region. I see it. Okay. Signal location uploaded to PDA, integrating new PDA data. God, the music's so epic. Blueprints for a floodlight, nice. When you discover when you discover new things, it's so epic with the sound. Standard issue floodlight, nice. Okay, let's have a look at this. So we've got the Degasi survivors abandoned PDA, an environment log. User Paul Torgle requested cross-referencing of local environment scans with ideal habitat construction conditions, displaying results. Large subterranean cavern with multiple entrances conditions support a unique microcosm of predatory life forms. Minor structural instability in cave walls. Extensive resource deposits. Average environment safety rating C. Optimal habitat site safety rating B. Site 7 has been selected as the optimal habitat construction site for the following reasons. Close proximity to one of the cave entrances in case of emergency, medium distance from predatory organisms, stable foundations on which to build, ready access to materials, signal tracking, the site has been created. Cool. So this is sort of like the game being like, hey, you can probably, this is probably where you might want to set up your base to, to start. You could, you could put a base here if you wanted. It's got some good foundations. You can easily get out of here. Um, we got fucking snakes, which is going to be fun. Um, something that could be really cool that we could do here as well that we can craft is we do have the air filter thing and we could just make a long series of pipes that go all the way down here at least until we figure out how to get like a uh sort of oxygen filtration system thing going on uh in an underwater base i would assume that would be the thing Emergency flotation device. Chemical reaction produces lighter, lighter than air gas for fast personal buoyancy. Nice. Yeah, we can craft a bunch of pipes with a floating air pump, maybe. Bring it down here, but that's good to know. I do need to get out of here for the moment, though. Because oxygen. So we're going to quickly take ourselves to the surface. It's creepy, creepy, going in the, the really deep caves. Don't worry, I'm on my way. You never realize how, uh, how close you're getting until you, uh, <laughs> until you're like, wait. You're like, wait, I actually need to get to the surface really quickly. This is why we're choosing to pause the game when we open our PDA. Okay, so we've got a proposed... Is that new? Hiya! Spade fish. Oh, it's a new one. Reginald. <laughs> Reginald. A small herbivore and a distant relative of the common peeper, sharing that species' well-developed side-facing eyes, approximate size and body profile. Dull green coloration for deep water camouflage. Luminescent tail coloration, likely part of mating behavior. Filters algae and other plant material from the water via four gill-like forward-facing orifices, and it can be edible. It can be eaten with a high calorie count. Spade fish, another herbivore. A lot of herbivores in this uh, in this ocean. Give me that. Uh, I want it. I want that high, high protein fish. High protein fish. At least they stand out. You'll start to identify and really know what you want to look for. Now, oh god, it's one of those dangerous fish. 
So now we've got a designated uh, or well, proposed habitat down in the cave system, which is cool. We want to find some sea moth blueprints. I'm trying my best not to get overwhelmed at this game because it feels feels largely overwhelming because uh, it feels like when you're kind of chucked into a game where uh, the world's your oyster, like you can do almost anything, go anywhere, and it's really up to you and there isn't... Um, there's, there's a loose structure in terms of what you can check out. Um, you can you can tend to struggle a little bit there. We, we've seen one of these, but we've seen a much larger version. This is a smaller version, I think. It's a much smaller version. So creepy. So forgive me if maybe I, I don't make any progress or I kind of like need to like realign myself for a little while. There's the big one. Um, because my brain is sort of like adjusting to the fact that I have to navigate these treacherous waters. <laughs> you know? So I'm just kind of like, my brain is like, what should we do? And where should we go? You know? So as long as you can bear with me um, on, on that front, I might kind of seem like I've got no idea what I'm doing for a little while. I'm not sure if that's a, a common experience or not, but um, we, we'll, we'll do our best. So we've been given the, a proposed... Actually, the, the proposed habitat is, a, is further away than uh, where we found the PDA, I think. Unless this is a different cave entrance. I'm gonna try and avoid. I need to. I need to scan these snakes while not getting killed by them. How do you reckon I could do here? Oh, I'm being. Oh, I'm being attacked by another one. It's really not wanting to scan it. Actually. Oh God. Can I? Oh, they hide in there. Oh! Oh! Jesus! I should have probably, I should have probably figured that out, that they would do that. Oh god, that was scary. Um, they, they didn't want to be scanned. Um, I was trying to scan them, but they were just refusing. Back, back to the surface. <laughs> you know what, actually, I've just realized that maybe what we should do is we could craft multiple, because I've got, yeah, I've got a standard tank as well. I could just craft multiple tanks and then swap them over and over instead of doing what we're doing. That would be pretty smart, wouldn't it? Maybe, hopefully. That might be what I need to do. Uh, make it, make some more, make some more tanks. And then I can have a few tanks in my inventory. It will take up space, but I will be able to buy myself a little bit more time. Because at the moment, I feel like I'm not actually able to really explore much. Because then I've got to make my way back up to the surface already, you know? Okay. I'm thinking i got to make some more stuff before we... Before we head out into the world, I think. Because my sea glide's almost out of battery. And I assume that... I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna need one of those. So we're gonna make some stuff for that. Uh, I need to go get some mushrooms so I can make a battery so we can make the actual thing happen. We can make another waterproof locker. And I'm thinking that'd be nice. Uh, to maybe just drop around here again for some more stuff. Um, I need to make a standard oxygen tank to make a high capacity one. But instead of the tank thing, I could also just do the air pump and the pipes because we do have that already. This will be a learning experience. It will be, it will be a learning experience. You can cook Reginald if you want. 
Um, metal salvage makes more titanium. Let's make some of that. Let's go get some mushrooms. Actually, I think that my little uh, storage tank, my little storage crate, should have some mushrooms in it. Uh, nope. It does not have mushrooms in it. That's fine. It does have gold in there, though. That's pretty good. Um, we're going to have to go get some mushrooms. Pretty easy to come by. I'm just going to store resources in there. Get these fish out. This can be like a resource arrangement. All right, so I've got one acid mushroom. They're pretty easy to come across. They're literally right here. But I'm, I, I really am just diving into... Um, you know, this world, and part of me feels like I'm almost trying to rush myself into a cave where I don't think that I need to, you know what I mean? I think I need to rush myself into a cave. Um, I feel like we can, we can cruise a bit, build up some, build up some resources, some, some equipment, you know, and then head into danger. Um, I personally, this is a new type of experience for me. Uh, especially on on the channel as like as like a let's play, so I I think it will definitely be sort of like an adjustment of how are we gonna do a let's play like this. So I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out as as we go because it's a different type of experience. Usually I play a lot of like structured story based games, and that is pretty easy to do. Um, but then you'll be thrown into a situation uh, where it's a little bit different. And it's a bit more open, so it's like, well, what do I start showing in the playthrough? Uh, do I, you know, cut out some some menial backtracking and, like, resource gathering and, and, and stuff like that? And then, obviously, show new important discoveries, um, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Um, I'm sure we will... I'm sure we'll figure this out as it goes along. Uh, so we'll make... Let's make ourselves another sea glider. Um, that way we've actually got one with a decent amount of, uh, of battery there, which is good. Um, we're going to put some stuff away. We do have a decent amount of water, which is good. I do have to drink some. Um, I'm going to put the titanium away. We do need to, I actually do need to make another waterproof locker because we are, we are filling up space really quickly already, actually. So let's make another one of these. Um, and we'll just we'll just drop it on we'll just drop it on outside with the with the other one uh, and we're gonna have just a collection <laughs> just gonna have a collection of uh, waterproof lockers there you go <laughs> that just sit next to each other uh, hey that just sit next to each other open storage thank you okay and then we're just gonna be able to drop some stuff in there so uh, for now we'll just put that in there so that way I can't pick it up because it's not empty which is good. All right, resources in there. We've got some water. Let's uh, let's actually drink that water. Consume. I'm gonna need to eat some food soon. Now, high calories is Reginald, right? High calorie count. We should we should cook Reginald. Yeah, I, I promise this will get a. Uh, this will get better as we as we go along. At least I would hope so. I will find a, a decent rhythm and, um, you know, it, it should become like this nice little thing that we've got going. There you go. I'm, I just want to heal myself and also not be hungry. Uh, we're going to unpin this stuff because now I've made them. So it's good. I don't know what we want to make next. What I do know is I want to scan some stuff, that's for sure. All right, we've got another medical kit, so I think we we can use this. After we got chewed on by a snake, by a sea snake that I was not allowed to scan. It would not it would not scan it. Uh, I should probably I think we could just I'm not sure if we can have some stuff that just like doesn't go in a waterproof container. So I, I can't drop stuff within this pod. I can only drop it outside of the pod. Uh, so if I just get this out of here. Oh, it sinks. Yep. It just, yeah. 
it do, it do sink. There you go. So that's just going to go right to the sea floor. <laughs> that is going to go right to the sea floor. Uh, gotcha. Um, which does make sense. Something that I feel like uh, we should look into is getting some more uh, materials as well in the form of um, copper and and silver and stuff like that as well. As always, I'm probably going to need some more bladder fish because uh, they are good for water. And this thing looks new. Brain coral. Brain coral. Coral. Brain coral. A permanent growing colony of microscopic organisms. This coral species has adapted to filter carbon dioxide from the environment, using the carbon to build the colony and expelling the oxygen from specialized exhaust funnels. It is quite hardy, suggesting samples from a mature specimen could be grown artificially. Air tanks are equipped to siphon oxygen from the water where possible. Oh, hello. Have I just got a natural oxygen refill here? <gasps> oh, shit. I don't need to... Oh, that's cool. Okay, I only got it. Oh, that. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Damn. Okay. That changes things dramatically. I don't have to make a new oxygen tank at all. If we can just find some... Oh, nice. Okay. If we can just find brain coral, then then we're then we're solid. We're good, actually. That's fine. Yeah, I think we'll we'll find a groove. We'll figure it out in terms of like what happens here. Like maybe there might be sort of an element of this. Oh, oh. Um, I do have my radiation suit. Uh, there'll be an element of this where I'll probably be like, I need to do some exploring or some resource gathering. And we might like cut that out. But then if obviously I discover anything that's like new and amazing um, to be shown, obviously that would be included. You know what I mean? Like there would be a balance that we would strike there. Um, it would be, it would just be a thing to, to balance because I don't want to, I feel like it might be a little maybe boring if it's just like hey guys today i'm gonna go pick up uh items and do nothing else and make no discoveries you know so it it, it will definitely be I, a blend i feel um in that regard you know now the reason why i'm back here is because i put my radi i put my mask my radiation helmet away so i actually need to grab that Put that in there. Um, let's go to wherever that was. Let's put on the, we'll put on the radiation helmet when we get close. Now, problem is remembering which direction I actually came from. Which direction did I come from? Is the radiation down here? I think this is a different spot. This was a different spot. Uh, I need to I need to find out where that radiation spot was. Put my radiation mask on, and then we can do some do some exploring. Hello, fart fish. Okay, I think it was around this wreckage. So I remember this. And there's the brain pod. So we can get some oxygen from this. That's cool. I like this a lot. And I think we found the cave again. This is this is great though. So now I don't have to make an oxygen tank. That that's a relief. Let's go in here. Now let's equip the radiation helmet. So now we're in full radiation gear. And I think it was down here. Yes. And 
we've got some brain coral down here. So we can get some nice quartz down here. Is there anything that I actually... We should probably have something to focus on, I think, of what of what we should make. So we don't have the Seamoth stuff yet, so the ingredients are unknown. Artificial gravity to attract light objects and small creatures. That is quite cool, actually. I'm assuming you can just stick that wherever and then get some cool stuff out of it. Scan a room. Now, that's what I was talking about. Base attached air pumps. You can make a base and have some air out of it, but that seems like we're not ready for that yet. <laughs> Maybe we should build a base first. We, got a we need a habitat builder. Fabricates habitat compartments and appliances from raw materials. So we don't have one of those. Pathfinder tool deploys a holographic pathfinder disc used to map a way back out of caves or hard to navigate spaces. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. So this is like a little quartz arrangement, gotcha. Sea glide fragment, that's all right. We've got one of those. We're, we're more in the, in the market for something a little bit different. God, these, these are everywhere. Damn, all right. And this is why it's useful to scan as much as possible. Um, definitely why it's useful to scan as much as possible. We get it, like another 30 seconds of oxygen there. Nice. Okay, I think that's going to make our life much, much easier. Salt deposit. Special equipment is required to collect this resource. Alright, what do we need to collect resources? Is the survival knife not... Oh, uh, laser cutter? I would say the laser cutter would make a lot of sense for that. It was worth a shot. Laser cutter, potentially? So we need to find some... Uh, blueprints for that and this seems to be the oh god this seems to be the best way to do that is by looking around on the floor for a bunch of stuff oh laser cutter fragment how do i get that how do you oh i have to scan it don't i you scan it to get the fragments nice um, so that sea glide fragment we saw earlier, I shouldn't need to pick that up because I've already got a sea glide, right? That makes sense. All right, laser cutter. That's good. As long as I, f like, find something new, I'm like, okay, I'm not completely, like, fucking this up. I'm not wasting my time. <laughs> we found something cool. We're getting some metal salvage while we're out here. Uh, creature egg. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Okay, gotcha. Uh, I also will state for the record that I will probably need to... It's just the way of things, unfortunately. I'll probably need to explore the same area, like, five times before we actually get everything out of it. Because, I mean, this place is pretty massive and expansive, and it's gonna... It's overwhelming. It is also overwhelming. So I'm trying, I'll try my best on that front to explore as much as possible. But we are going to miss some things. I would like some more oxygen, please. Thank you. These things are going to be a goddamn lifesaver, that's for sure. So happy that we discovered this. <laughs> and then our sea glide is about to be non-existent soon. That's why we made a backup one. Yeah, I feel like this experience is going to be a lot of me sort of diving in, picking up some resources, taking it back to the, uh, taking it back to the escape pod and eventually getting comfortable enough to probably build some sort of base, uh, in this place. Proposed Degasi habitat, you know? Bioreactor fragment. Oh, this is huge. Okay, so this is also stuff 
Blueprints for a bioreactor. Now, on planets where organic matter is plentiful but sunlight is not, a reliable bioreactor will frequently prove the most efficient power solution. May be installed in any multi-purpose habitat room, chemically composts organic materials, converting them into energy over time. It accepts all plant matter from seeds and spores to moldy fruits and vegetables, can also process animal matter and some organic waste products. Energy production is proportionate to the calories. Okay, totally organic. Interesting, okay, we found a fragment for that. I think what I'm realizing as well is there's a lot of things that I wouldn't expect to be scannable or a fragment, and then this happens. Nuclear waste disposal, okay. For example, yeah, I'll look at that and go, oh, I, I didn't expect a, this bioreactor fragment, right? You know? Um... Because you're looking for smaller things and then there's other stuff, so we'll, we'll get there, we'll figure it out. Scattered wreckage from the Aurora. Outer layers of the material have oxidized, suggesting it has been heated to over 1200 degrees Celsius. This pattern is consistent with hull disintegration during atmospheric entry. Salvage of intact portions of our Terra vessels is prohibited at legal, moral, and technical levels. However, scraps such as these may be reclaimed for their titanium content at any Altera fabricator. Cool, okay. So yeah, scanning everything and anything is definitely highly recommended. Nice. Wish I could kind of attach a flashlight to my head or something. Oh, actually I should probably chuck this on as well. Oh, I've just dropped it. Let me chuck this on, because we're not going through... Oh, I am going through radiation. Oh. I thought I was safe. Ah! I'm not safe. I'm in radiation right now. Okay, gotcha. Oh, and I'm being attacked by a fish. Uh, I'm gonna consume some water. Fucking... Look at this bad boy. Eat, trying to eat my ass. God. Okay. Problem is, I'm not always surrounded by brain thing. Anyway, brain Carl. Alright, I'm gonna head back to my habitat and store all that I have. I'll make another waterproof locker. Seems like a seems like a great idea. Make make another waterproof locker. Because I need <laughs> storage containers to put my goddamn resources in. Get that out of here. All right, there's another one. There's another one. Put that. Put that in there. There you go. Titanium for for later. Perfect. I'm th I'm thirsty again. I wonder if there's just uh, a way that I can uh, set up like a a permanent water refill station, but I think I'm just gonna have to do the whole bladder fish farming, get myself some filtered water, stock it all up. But yeah, you definitely get, it feels like you get thirsty more than anything else in this one. At least they are easy to identify. So you just be like, I'm gonna go on a bit of a bladder fish run, pick them up, get some water. Craft them, get out of here. Um, it's definitely much easier to traverse these places during the day. Who would have thought? So I think, as far as I can tell, the uh, the actual metal salvage that you find um, is made is just for titanium. I think. It doesn't look like the, from what I can see, that the metal salvage is for anything else. Not entirely sure if that's true, but I guess we'll find out over time as we find more blueprints. 
We also, I guess, got to watch our power levels on the ship for what we make. But it is daytime, so it should be good. Okay, storage container. It's a decent amount of water. Store that titanium. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Um, all right, I feel like we should check out this habitat just to see what it like looks like. This proposed habitat. Um, see how we go. Oh, hang on. Exchange power source with R. Oh shit. Hang on a minute. Oh, that makes so much sense. Oh, that's so much sense. Damn. Okay, hang on. Exchange power source. You just make a new battery. Oh god, use your brain. That. I've crafted a whole new sea glide. When all you have to do is just make a new battery and just put a battery in there. Okay, obviously I didn't know this information until I've had to discover it. Like, logically, that makes sense. But being a survival game, I don't know. It could go either way. Like, you're like, unfortunately, it's a one and done. But it's, ve it's very sustainable. <laughs> it's very sustainable. So what we've done is we've uh, made ourselves a second sea glide unnecessarily. Um, and we could just, you can just make batteries and chuck them in there. So batteries, copper ore and acid mushrooms. And then I guess we have a 0% charge. We'll, we'll then have a 0% charge battery out of it. All right, well, we don't have any copper. So it would be cool if you could dismantle. I wonder if you can dismantle, because we can only fabricate. Dismantling equipment and breaking it down would be interesting. We're going to drop the sea glide and that's just going to sit at the bottom of the ocean underneath that <laughs> and we're just going to use our new one uh, but we know that going forward okay so anything that we have now we can replace a battery um, in it there you go learning let's go check out this habitat because I'm worrying that I'm not making progress And I would like to make progress. Okay. All right, we're in radiation zone down there. Got our little brain pod for some oxygen here. Um, oh God. And where's this? There it is. Down here. I think the lower down you get, the more radioactive it is, I assume. Mobile vehicle bay fragment. One out of three. Mobile vehicle bay. I think at the moment that's what I want to be looking out for the most is this kind of stuff. And I'll pick up salt when I find it as well. Not really sure what I need salt for yet. I assume you could use the salt on your food, right? That would seem like a smart thing. Sea glide fragment. Okay, so what happens if we scan it again? Because we've already. Oh shit! Repetitive fragments give materials. Okay, so it is worth doing it. Cool. Okay. If you find fragments of things you've already discovered, still scan it and then you get some materials. Okay. Gotcha. So you guys are going to have to bear with me, like, learning everything, obviously. 
<laughs> so it's just going to be a series of oh, obviously wonderful. Okay, there's a proposed habitat. Giant coral tubes. Giant coral tubes. Radiation detected. Okay. I I gotta stop doing that. I think it's right click to equip, but it's not. I gotta find my way to this habitat <laughs> in all of this in this cave system mess as well. This is a, personally, this is an ADHD nightmare. This is, this game is an ADHD nightmare. Is that a forklift? No shit. You can get forklift certified in this game. Um, vending machine, nice. Yeah, you could, this is a nightmare for, for an ADHD brain because it's just like, ooh, what's this? Ooh, what's that? Oh, and then it's like, oh, I should do this. But then my brain is like, ooh, but what's this over here? And I, I just feel like this is going to, this is going to be, <laughs> this is going to be really challenging for me. <laughs> it's going to be pro, I actually feel like this might be one of the most challenging playthroughs I do on the, ch on the channel. I'll be real with you. Just for, with that in mind. Okay, now I'm just picking up shit. I've got a fluid analyzer, non-functional, <laughs> and a sample analyzer. Non-functional, non-functional laboratory equipment. What do I do with this? I'm gonna drop this. I might need it for something at some point or there'll be like a repair, st I can repair it. Oh, hang on, I've got a repair tool, don't I? Hang on. Does it work? I don't know if that works. Yeah, um, I'll figure that out later. Right now I'm not picking up non-functional garbage. I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll we'll come back to that. Let me get some oxygen. Wait for this to come out. Refresh me. Refresh me, Carl. Be nice to just pick one of these up, you know, just take them with you. This game is almost going to make me want to never tell you guys what my actual objective is or what I'm intending to do because I feel like I'm just not going to be able to commit. <laughs> I just, I genuinely feel like I'm not going to be able to commit. I'll be like, this is the plan. And then we just, and then I'll show you exactly how I'm going to completely forget about that plan and do something else instead. You know what I mean? All right. I need to figure out how to get down here. Now, the good thing is th this little pod thing has a map, I guess. So I can kind of assess my environment, I suppose, in that way. So we might be able to discover a, a sort of cave entrance or system. Titanium. Got some quartz. I scan whatever this is. No. Nope. Oh my god! It gets so thirsty in this game. It's a good thing all that I have is water. Vital signs stabilizing. All that I have is water. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Okay. Is there going to be any brain coral? I should save my game here just in case. <laughs> is there going to be any brain coral in here somewhere for some oxygen? Otherwise, we're in trouble. All right. This is a proposed habitat. Passing 200 meters. Goddamn. We are we are deep. Oh look, there's an actual Oh cool. 
Um, we are going to definitely drown. Um, we're going to definitely drown. But there is a base down there. Okay, what happens when we run out of oxygen? For curiosity's sake. We just fade to black. Roll credits. You died and lost some belongings. So, okay, so you die and you lose some belongings. I didn't lose any of my, my water, my materials, my equipment. I'm assuming we've lost resources that we've picked up, like the titanium and stuff like that. So we've lost just like kind of resource stuff. Um, interesting. When we die, I'll... Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's, I see what's going on. I see what's, I see what's going on there. And you get taken back here. Right. Okay. I can see that it would be useful for us to save the game before you make any risky decisions, because then if you're in trouble, you can reload. Which is probably a good idea. Now... Where's this, where's this habitat at? I can't see the habitat signal. Where is it? Where's that habitat? Let me turn off that signal, because that one's confusing me. Maybe we can change the color of it, make it an orange one. So that's what I want. That's what I want at the moment. Where is it? Maybe you have to get closer. Maybe I'm too far away for the signal to actually appear. Um, why won't the beacon show up? But it's an, it's an established base, actually, so that's quite cool. So, I'm assuming we can, like, clean it up and make it a, uh, an actual base. So we've got sort of a foundation already, which is nice. I'm not seeing the beacon, though. Unstuck. No, I don't want that. I just want to load my game. I like that you can only save, but you can't load. Is there like a quick load in terms of the keyboard stuff? Quick, quick save and a quick load. Can I do that? I might have to... Let me see if I can... Um... I'm going to jump back into where we were with our save. 100 meters. Because this this beacon ain't showing up, so I actually don't know how to get back to it. So that beacon does the beacon disappear when you actually get to the location? That's that's just my confusion right now. So we're just gonna reload, replenish that oxygen. Okay, we're quite close to the ship here. Yeah, we just lost uh, most of... That's kind of... You don't really lose much, which is nice. Alright, let's head back down here. But yeah, it looks like that this beacon just kind of disappeared from our, uh, our map. Okay, so this proposed habitat is apparently away from predators, but it looks like there's literally one just chilling in there. Oxygen efficiency greatly decreased. I need to find a way to... How do I get in here? Let me in. Planter. Is this how I can get in in here? Print acquired. 
30 seconds. Okay, we're in multi-purpose room. Oh god. Can I like... Okay. Oh god. We're gonna... Okay, we're gonna drown again. Because this is not airtight. Okay, I need... <laughs> okay. We're learning. I think what I'm gonna need... I think what I'm gonna need to do here, first and foremost, is I need to either find a brain coral nearby, or I'm gonna need to bring a spare tank with me. No. Yeah, the, it, does the beacon for the base disappear? It seems that the, the beacon for the base disappears when you get there, which is a problem. Um, that is a problem. Because I can't find my way back. At least we, we know how far away it is, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need more oxygen before we actually get in there. And then if there's a way that I could, like I guess seal it off and then flush it, then we'd be able to chill in there, right? And then I can build and like an air filter, and then we have a little base in there as like a starting point for exploration, so we don't have to go back to the life pod constantly. I think we can do that. I just need to build some appropriate things. So now that we know that there's a base foundation there, um, I guess we just need to figure out how to how to actually enter base land. Like, how do we make stuff? So if we can make a hatch, we can put a hatch on a thing. Uh, make a base attached air pump so we can put an air pump in. I don't know where we put it, but we'll figure it out. Um, I, I guess we'll, we can make ourselves a fabricator to put it in the base if there isn't already one in there. We need a table coral sample. Um, yeah, damn. It, we have to figure out what we can do there. We need to seal it off and we need to figure out how to flush it. So we can get the water out of there. I don't know if that's even possible. <laughs> maybe it's just like, maybe we just have to dismantle the base there. And then um, make a new one on top of it. We'll get there. This will be this will be a learning experience for all of us. Most importantly, me. I think the thing that we should definitely do, or at least try and make a priority, is I, th I think we need to get this this sea moth thing uh, sorted out. Um, because if we get a sea moth. It looks like a nice little submersible, and that'll probably allow us to get down deeper instead of just, you know, relying on a, um, <laughs> relying on our sea glide, you know. Uh, data bank, coral. Um, if we can look at blueprints, and then what is the, what is the beacon? What is the beacon? This thing. Navigation aid maintains and broadcasts its position configurable name. Oh, cool. Navigation aid. So we could like drop this somewhere. Cool. Okay. That's nice. You're going to be able to build a forklift. Who knows? Uh, obviously the problem is with Seamoth fragments, you kind of don't know where they are. Uh, you've just kind of got to find big wreckage. And then hopefully you've got some fragments around there, but it seems that specific places might have um, different things. For example, uh, this has some more, like you'll find a place that has laser cutter fragments and a place that has beacon fragments and so on and so forth. But we need to find a wreckage that's got some more seamoth fragments and then that's what we can, we can build. So. I guess that's the adventure that I'm embarking on. Uh, I will look for wreckage and I will find Seamoth Fragment and um, happy days after that point, I suppose. I guess anywhere that's near the Aurora is a good place to, to look as any. Um, and I guess that we'll also eventually be able to 
get onto the uh, the Aurora. God, we'll be able to get onto the Aurora itself. Okay, looks like I'm just really going to need the radiation helmet on most of the time. And these are the type of periods where I think it, it's kind of like there's nothing really going on and I'm just kind of searching. So these would be the type of moments that I would probably in future uh, cut out of the of the episodes, you know? So if you ever see any sort of like cuts like that, it's just probably going to be me cutting that dead air, you know? Saving ourselves some time. Is this is this something I can scan? See something now. I'm just like if I'm looking at a big thing, I'm like, can I scan that? And I just didn't realize it before. So a lot of these cargo containers are closed. Mobile vehicle bay fragment. Two out of three. Okay, and the mobile vehicle bay. I guess we don't know what it is yet, but I'm assuming, <laughs> guys, bear with me here. It might be a mobile vehicle bay. It might be exactly what it is on paper. You will be able to make your vehicles mobile. Maybe it'll like charge it or some shit. I don't know. What is that? Grav trap and a and a beacon. Scan things. Get titanium. Hang around wreckages. You'll never know what you can find. Hopefully it's actually what you need. Looking for sea moth fragments is bloody difficult in a full ocean. I guess at least there's a lot of wreckages. <laughs> Just keep going through wreckages until we get to the one that we want to be at. And I've got so much titanium, it's becoming a problem now. So I'm going to try and... This is another thing, you have to... You have to... <laughs> titanium! You have to really, I guess, watch out for uh, picking random shit up all the time, because before you know it, your inventory is full. Old metal salvage. I don't know if any human wreckage ends up in those like deep areas or whether they're more in like open sandy spots. Maybe I should go back to, you know what, maybe we should go back to the life pod 17. I think life pod 17 might be, that might be where we can find um, some seamoth fragments actually. Because I think that's where we found our first one. So logically speaking. Oh, nice. These glow. These glow in the dark as well. Nice. Well, at least we know that. Brain coral glows. Yeah, let's look around life pod 17. We might be pleasantly surprised. I'm glad that the days do actually move pretty fast because it's pretty hard to look around at night. It's beautiful though. What is this? Scanner room fragment. Okay, two out of three. Yeah, I'll take one of those. Why not? Take one of those big boys. Just on a nice, relaxing ocean swim. Alright, let's check this life pod out. Now, I don't think there was anything in here for us. Just that it got attacked, and then we should check out the surrounding... Wreckage. Got 
those uh, those deep sea noises are quite unsettling, aren't they? Well, this just takes us into one hundred meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. It just takes us back into that cave system. Again, I don't think we're going to find any seamoth fragments there. Uh, we got some wreckage here. Let's have a look. I'm assuming the... Oh, God. Get away from me. Jesus. Uh, I'm assuming the seamoth fragments would be in... Are they in the bigger ones? Oh, God, they're all closed. And then I don't know if I've actually checked this out the last time we were here because everything looks the same in the ocean, God damn it. If I'm being quite honest with you. Everything looks the same out here. Bioreactor fragment. Nice. Oh, we've got a bioreactor fragment. Alright, we can make a bioreactor now. Yeah. Ah, nice. Oh, sandstone for silver. Gotcha. Sandstone for silver is good. 30 seconds. Okay. We got any brain coral around here? Also nice that we got confirmation earlier that when we run out of uh, when we run out of oxygen, um, we just do pass the hell out instead of it being a situation where you um, start taking like health damage or something so it's kind of it if I was a sea moth where would I be this looks like another scanner room fragment I'm finding everything fragment wise except what we're actually looking for Yo, battery charger. Oh god, I'm being munched on. Battery charger. Nice. That's great. Okay, I'm a fan of that. Our batteries on the sea moth, for example, run low that we've just ditched to the bottom of the ocean. We can take that battery out and charge it. I'm assuming you have to replace the battery to get it out, but it doesn't seem like much of a painful process. Hi, reactor fragment. Titanium. My inventory is now full. Okay. Titanium is clearly, very clearly, the easiest thing to come across ever. So I can feel better about dropping that sometimes. Okay, so fire reactor, good. Battery charger, one out of two. But the, the primary objective is I wish for a sea moth. At least this area seems to have a lot of useful things around it in this wreckage. Maybe we'll branch out the search bit, go over this way. Avoid the crazy, whatever it's called. Nice. All right, laser cutter fragment. That should be our final fragment for that. Nice. We have a laser cutter. Now I'm I'm assuming that the laser cutter is. Cutting device suitable for penetrating standard titanium doors. Oh, okay. And we need some cave sulfur. Diamonds. We do not have diamonds yet. Penetrating standard titanium doors. Okay. So, oh, we're probably going to use that to get into the Aurora then, aren't we? Uh, I thought it would be used to like, you could also use it to maybe get into salt deposits, but maybe I'm going to need something else for that. What's in here? 
Laser cutter fragment. Hmm. Okay. Maybe hanging around this place for a Seamoth Fragment wasn't the right idea. Oh, yeah, nice. Mobile Vehicle Bay Fragment. Okay, Mobile Vehicle Bay. Fabricates, oh, it fabricates vehicles. Okay, it makes vehicles. Titanium ingot, ingot? Ingot, lubricant, and a power cell. We make a power cell with two batteries and silicon rubber. Okay, gotcha. All right, we are making progress. We could probably follow this trail of... See, you can find a lot of things around the same area within each other. Like, here's a lot of, like, mobile vehicle bay fragments and, and such and such. But I've forgotten where we found the Seamoth one, because at that point in time... I thought that they might have be like scattered around the place, but it seems like they're actually pretty close together. Can you just surface and just stay up there, please? Thank you. Um, hmm. Let's continue to take a look around here because hopefully you'll be pleasantly surprised. It's more titanium. What's our inventory looking like? Yeah. Passing 100 meters, oxygen efficiency decreased. Mobile vehicle bay fragment. Okay, so there's a lot of mobile vehicle bay here. Tree mushroom. Tree mushroom. Exploitable. Analysis of these large organic structures reveals a microcosm of cooperating, cohabitating, and competing life forms. The main trunk is a species of coral, some colonies up to 50k years old. The caps which line it share more in common with earth fungi. Other organisms grow on the structure whenever there is space and light. Surrounding waters are dense with herbivorous, herbivorous, herbivorous life forms in the 1mm to 10mm range to the extent that larger herbivores appear to have mostly abandoned the area. Okay, a bunch of small fishies around here. There's a lot of uh, wreckage down here. Jelly Ray, that's awesome. That's cool. Get your butt over here. Jelly Ray, come back over here. Jelly Ray Vaughn. Nice. Jelly Ray. Adapted to low light environments with a translucent luminescent body. It can light up surrounding area for foraging, waterway predators, and identify the organism to others of its kind. Smaller creatures have been seen swimming in the jelly ray's wake to take advantage of the light source. Cool, and it's not edible. Cyclops hull fragment. 30 seconds. Blueprints for a cyclops. Look at this. This is huge. What is that? The Cyclops is the most popular and reliable deep sea submersible in the galaxy. Oh. <laughs> Friendship ended with Seamoth. Cyclops is my new best friend. We'll just skip the Seamoth entirely. By comparison to the competition, it can be crewed by just one pilot, hence the name. It looks huge. Three speed manual piloting controls and forward observation deck for precision maneuvering, a dry dock for transportation, maintenance, and recharging of scouting vehicles. You can recharge scouting vehicles within the Cyclops. Okay. Storage solutions. Extensive storage solutions. This is a mobile base, dude. Internal and external video feeds. We can be like goddamn Nautilus and start doing some... Uh, we'll become a deep sea exploration channel. Onboard AI for threat detection. Extensive customization options. Higher speeds generate additional noise, which may attract undesired attention. Power consumption. Silent running mode may be activated in conjunction with any speed setting to reju reduce noise close to zero. A lot of power. Cyclops upgrades may be fabricated at the terminal. Cool. It does not feature habitation quarters. Recommended the captain draw up a rotor to decide who gets to sleep in the corridor each night. Automatic fire suppression. 
An emergency ballast. In the event of a full system failure, the vehicle will sink. Okay, this is a that's a big boy. Okay. Seamoth is still gonna be valuable with that in mind, I would say. Oxygen. Oh shit. Oh god, no, I'm not gonna make it. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. No, I wasn't paying attention. The rebreather's not gonna not gonna buy me any time, is it? <laughs> Quick! Give me some oxygen. If I had my standard tank in here, it would be fine. Damn it. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Why is it all? Why must it all be empty? Is there anything in here for me, please? Salvage, please. Is this something? Scanner room fragment. Okay, we got a scanner room fragment. That's nice. That's something. It ain't a seamoth fragment, but it's something. Ah, yes. A fragment finding fragments for everything except what are we are desperately searching for unfortunately yeah. while also being surrounded by those guys god damn it Gold makes a fancy sound when you get that in your inventory. That's cool. Got some more wreckage over here. Passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Bar table, yep, that's exactly what I've been after. I've been looking for a bar table. That's, that's it. That forklift again. These little oxygen refills are never exactly where I need them to be. And where I need them to be is next to me at all times. So we have another disappearing beacon issue, which we can't even go back to the life pod 17 now. Because we don't know where it is anymore. So they seem to pop up whenever they feel like it. One of these days, I'm going to get a Seamoth Fragment, and it's going to be beautiful. <gasps> oh my god. It's just sitting here. Okay, so that's just sitting two out of three. It's just not even in a crate. That's just sitting on the ground. <gasps> god damn. I feel re reinvigorated. I feel reinvigorated on my search. Okay. We found one around here, that means we can find another around here. Alright, let's look for some similar shaped rubble. Could you be what I need? Whatever you are? 
damn it. 30 seconds. Mm. Close. Almost got what we need. Get how much harder it is with our uh when you obviously lower down oxygen goes down faster oh there's a pod here yep there's a pod here it's been busted open open data box ultra glide fins Ultra glide fins, nice. God. Integrating new PDA data. Okay, cool. Let's have a read. Let's do What are you doing? This one first. I need you to stay calm. We're not in immediate danger. Where are the rescue teams? The Aurora didn't make it. So where are the rescue teams? They're dead, ma'am. We have rendezvous coordinates, but the routes are radiated. So, what are you going to do? I'm head of human resources, ma'am. This is not my expertise. But the PDA says if we can find some lead, we can make radiation suits. Oh, there! I am not setting foot outside this life pod without the proper protection. Don't worry. I'll go. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll go. I'm sure that went fine. so long i thought you drowned put the flare down i was going to try and attract someone's attention that's not a distress flare stop waving it around like that you'll catch the fuel line god damn what a terrible passenger absolutely terrible passenger well fuel line was uh ruptured well done he nailed it um, okay, we found a blueprint for uh, other fins. What's that? Uh, Ultra glide fins. Streamline construction enhances swim speed considerably. So we need some lithium. We need lithium. Okay, I ain't even I ain't even seen lithium. All I know is I need to eat some food soon too. But I just know that there's a Seamoth Fragment around here specifically for me. It's got my name on it. Okay, we did it. We've got our Seamoth Fragments. New Blueprint Synthesized! We can do it. Okay. Titanium ingot, power cell, glass, lubricant, lead. Okay, we can do that. We can do that. That is totally achievable. Plastium. That's so achievable. Okay, we can make titanium ingot, power cell, we need two batteries, which we can definitely make lubricant, glass, lead. How do we get, how do we make lead? I guess we gotta find lead. Okay, new mission. New mission has dropped. Find lead. <laughs> gotcha. All right, first of all and foremost, we're heading back to the life pod to recoup, make some stuff we're going to eat, and then we'll figure out where to find some, uh, some materials. Okay, we have ventured far and wide. We have the equipment necessary. We got to find sandstone for lead. I have not successfully been able to find lithium. So the ultra glide fins will have to wait, but we can make a sea moth because we can make a power cell. Um, something that's really cool, by the way, about being able to make this power cell is we actually have both batteries, but one of our batteries is on 0%, but it doesn't matter, apparently. It still makes the power cell. How cool is that? It's nice. Uh, we can now make a sea moth, and I feel like that's just going to make things 
tremendously nicer for us. Um, we are... Mm, oh, that's fine. I can make one of those. Uh, deployables. Hang on, where is it? Tools? Where's the Seamoth at? <laughs> Actually, where's that? Where's the Seamoth at? I am. Um, equipment. No. Electronics. Hang on, do I just have to... Oh! Stupid. I have to... I have to make a... Hang on a minute. No. Shit. I have to make a mobile vehicle bay first. To make a vehicle. Crap. Okay, hold on. Which means I need another power cell and another titanium ingot and more lubricant. And why can't I say ingot right? Okay, hang on. We have to make the mobile vehicle bay first. All right, let's make that. Obviously. Oh, it's a good thing that we found all those mobile vehicle bay fragments then. There you go. Okay. Now I need lubricant. And more titanium. That's fine. We have these things. We have these things. But now I need batteries. Damn it. I got ahead of myself. Okay. Give me... Give me some space. Okay. So... These, this looks like it floats. So if we just drop this... Oh, God. Nope. That No, that just sinks. Hang on. You need to release it? Release vehicle bay. Oh, God. Hang on. Hang on. Release. Maybe I have to equip it first. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's bind it. Let's whip it out. There you go. There you go. And now if we... Ooh, ooh. Fancy. So if I climb this thing, use vehicle bay, we can now make vehicles from here. Okay, very, very cool. Alrighty. And you can pack it up. Okay, there you go. Wonderful. Alright, let's have a look. Because we're just going to need more titanium once again. So let me just pull them out of my, my storage lockers. Uh, we've got copper ore. Because uh, I'm going to need to make batteries again. Okay. Let's make some stuff once again. Um, I need acid mushrooms. So let's go fishing because the acid mushrooms are literally just down on the ground, which is nice. It's a good thing that uh, we've got batteries wherever we need it. Um... Perfect. Alright. We can make our batteries. Uh, I need... This is... Finally, there's creep vine stuff that we've kept outside of the thing, just in the ocean this whole time. It's actually going to come in handy for lubricant. Alright, two batteries. Um, now I can make a power cell. Done. Okay, now we can make titanium ingot. An ing an ingot. Oh, hang on a minute. I think this is the first time I'm having a, a light bulb. Is that what that symbol means? Oh crap, that means we have radio messages. I haven't even seen that. The only reason I've even paid attention to it right now is because it's I'm looking at this part of the screen. I haven't even seen that before. We have a little message icon there. Okay. I, I wonder how, how many messages that we're missing out on. Let's go and have a look. How many messages have we uh, have we got on our on our answering machine, guys? Let's find out. Alright, we can now make the Seamoth, <laughs> properly. <laughs> Perfect. All right, now we can do it at the the thing. Ah, oh, yes, that's rotten. We don't we don't want that. We don't want that. Let's get rid of that. Um, while we're at it, we may as well unpin that because I know that I can make it. Um, 
let's ditch this. Get the hell out of my inventory because you're rotten. Let's read this, uh, read, he says. Listen to this radio message. Receiving pre-recorded distress call playing back. This is LifePod 3, uploading our coordinates. We're plugging some holes in our emergency sea glide, so if we're late for the rendezvous, don't panic. Also, don't go home without us. Seriously. Three out. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Yeah, LifePod 3. Damage sea glide. Oh, okay, that was the only message. Okay. Well, that's fine. I have a repair tool. You know what? I am actually going to probably have to make some more batteries once again because our flashlight is about to die. And I've got copper to do so. Uh, let's make another battery just to sit it in our inventory in case I need to change some stuff over. We've got another destination that we can head to. Alright, I'm going to need to keep my eye out for that, that cheeky little radio letting me know that there's stuff going on. And we're going to try and get some lithium. We'll, we'll keep our eyes out for it. Alright, where's that vehicle bay? Let's make a sea moth. Okay. I feel like I've strugg struggled more in this episode than I did in the previous one, and I think that is because we started needing to actually, like, search and go deeper and discover things and get into more of the mechanics in the game instead of me just going, look at these shallow waters, and they're so beautiful, and I'm finding all of these things, you know? And we just kind of dived into it. I feel like I've kind of struggled a bit more because we're searching for very specific items to make certain things to explore, so... It's very, it's uh, very interesting. Safe mode of transport, but remember that swimming is good for your glutes and endorphin levels. Thank you. I definitely feel like this is going to be uh, more of a, what probably one of the most challenging. Uh, we're already on episode two, and for some reason I'm already like I feel like this is going to be probably one of the most challenging let's plays for me to put together in terms of constructing it and figuring out what the hell to do. Captain. But look at this. I have a sea moth, so, you know, nothing matters anymore. I have obtained amazing device. Okay, so we've got a temperature thing. We've got a power. Um, oh, this is awesome. Okay. This is really fun. We have a sea moth. Um, Look at this, look at this silly little guy. Look at this silly little guy, crash fish. Equip stasis rifle or repulsion cannon or similar before approaching. Ah, oh, because you can repulse them. That makes sense. Look at these creative names. Fish with a hole in it. It's a bottle opener. It is edible. Okay, um, let's see. So we can now, if we want to, um, go much further. Uh, to that beacon down there, the habitat, but let's check out life pod three in the shallows. Their sea glide has been damaged. This is cool. I feel so much safer in here. <gasps> Obviously that would happen, but, um, holy shit. We just killed a fish. Obviously that would happen, but I was just like, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> I, just, I just thought we would we would just like go right through it. All right, you instantly exit. There you go. Oh, you pick it. Yep. Oh God, it's it's dead. It's dead, so you just pick it up. You don't even put it in your inventory, dude. <laughs> okay, so you can run over things. Oh, that means we can take these guys on. <laughs> ah! Ugh! Oh, that did a, that actually did some damage. Did it kill it though? It didn't. It just it just freaked it out. Okay. <laughs> hang on. This is why we have the repair tool, right? Oh, hang on. Let's not do that. Don't don't ram things, guys. That's not that's not sensible. Let's go to Life Pod Three. Let's check out another another pod. How did I not find this before? I guess this is the interesting thing. When you get a beacon, you're like, oh, this has been here the whole time. How did I not see this? You know what I mean? Ooh, 
Cool. All right. Let's take a look. Integrating new PDA data. Ooh, new blueprint. New Compass. Blueprint acquired. A comp, a comp ass. We've got a comp ass. Where is it? Make the bioreactor. Battery charger. Then machine. All these things. Um, where is the compass? There'll probably be a tool, I suppose, right? Propulsion cannon. Nope, it's equipment. Displays compass heading on the HUD. Ooh, copper wire and a wiring kit. Okay, I feel like we're gonna really want this. So, copper wire, which is pretty easy to make. We can make that right now. And I think we've got enough silver. I think I've got silver in a box. So we can actually make that. Cool, we can make a compass whenever we want. Uh, that seems like a great idea. Okay, so something that's really cool that I appreciate is you get these radio messages, they pop up with distress signals, and then you're able to, like, get new things. So that's cool. And then another sea glide fragment, if you still didn't have that at this point. I'm assuming the radio messages just come in over time uh, as the days go by. Um, nice. That's good. I was worried as we were going through this episode that I wasn't going to make progress at, at a certain point because I was like, oh man, I'm kind of like struggling here. But I think we're okay again. I've kind of leveled myself out. Uh, we've met, we've finally got the fragments. I think it was the search for the sea moth fragments that was really, really getting me down. <laughs> I was like, goddamn. Uh, but we got it. And then once we've been able to do that, I think things are, are now able to open up a little bit more again. Yes, there's some silver... Wonderful. Um, all right, let's make this bad boy. Let's make a compass. Um, okay, first and foremost, wiring kit with the silver ore and the copper wire. Awesome. Let's make a compass. Displays compass heading on the HUD. All right, let's see what this actually does. That's the important part. Um, oh, it's just automatically equipped. Nice. Nice, south, southwest. Okay, awesome. That is how a compass works. I like that a lot. It's nice. All right, let's ditch some stuff that we don't currently need. Free up that inventory space. Um, I'm going to make another battery. And then I'm going to go bladder fishing. We're going to go bladder fishing. So I can take some water with me. Wonderful. Two batteries for the flashlight. I think the sea glide is still good to keep with us, even though we've got the sea moth, because we might want to get out and I don't know. I feel like it's still a good idea just in case. I don't know. I'll keep it on me. I'll keep that MF thing on me. Just for now. We'll see how much it actually gets used. Um, and then that'll be fine. All right, bladder fish. I need water. I also need some food. Uh, I'm a bit hungry. So that's that time of day when I need to get this fish. Why won't it? Just go into my inventory, will you? Oh, it, it goes into your hand if you're not currently holding any tools. That's why we picked up the dead bladder fish, not because we couldn't put it in the inventory. I'm just being silly. All right, there's my water source. I, there's got to be some form of thing that we can get at some point, I reckon, where you could, like, build something in the water that could like be a filtration system for the water, right? Put a thing in there and then it'll just filter the salt water and then you can, what? I don't even know if this is salt water. We're in space. Whatever type of undrinkable water. These fish are so much faster than me. Where are the, the bladder fish at? I just need some water, please. Why do they have to be called bladder fish? Makes it like seem like I'm drinking 
alien piss. I mean, probably am. I've just got to deal with it, I suppose. Alright, that's probably that's probably good. Unless any bladder fish want to show their faces on on my way back. There we go. There's another one. There's another two. Yeah. Master fisherman. Let's go. Okay. Pick up what? Acid what? Mushroom. Yes. One of the first things that we ever discovered. Apparently I forgot what those are. Alright. Let's make some food because I'm hungry. And we'll stockpile on the water. Carry fish. Some of the names are just so much better than others. The ones that are named after things. Reginald and Gary. Those are my favorite fish. Just by default. My favorite part about this now, I think personally, is now I get to go to that, uh, that base properly uh, with the sea moth instead of just literally going there and passing out. <laughs> okay, uh, that's good. Let's eat this food. Um, oh, actually, this is something I wanted to experiment with because we have salt and I'm like, is salt for food? Culinary and sanitation applications. So I want to grab some salt, actually, and I want to see what happens. What's the deal here? Um, oh, actually, it might be in the... Uh, it might be in the fabricator. Oh, it is because it's cured stuff. Dehydrating but keeps well. Okay, so you have to do it in the fabricator. And then I guess if saying it keeps well increases the amount of time uh, before it rots. That's cool. Good thing is I'm hungry, so we're just going to eat that straight up. Um, and then that stuff is probably going to go rotten before it even matters, but that's fine because I have a full stomach and nothing can stop me now from conquering the world. Okay, let's get rid of these because we don't need them anymore. We'll keep our fin up there. All right. This is our proposed habitat over here. This is what we needed, baby. Sea moth. And now I can feel like I'm actually making progress in this game again. We have, uh, we have gotten over a hurdle. This is great. I'm in my neat little vehicle. Just splattering fish on the way. Hopefully this... <laughs> and you're just hearing the sound effects of just things just going... Doosh, just on the outside. <laughs> Uh, accidentally killing everything in this place. All right. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, there you go. Radio message. Cool. Gotcha. Um, I guess this makes uh, this is good because like radiation as well isn't um much of a problem. I mean, we've got the rad suit, so that's okay. But... Oh god, I'm gonna. S okay, this is a problem in tight spaces because look at look at us damage this thing. Okay, this is not good. Learning how to. Okay. Yeah, this is not good. All right. Oh god, just hitting anything, even like kind of gently, just really kind of fucks it up. All right. Good thing we got the repair tool, but oh, uh, yep. Yeah, okay. Don't put me in behind uh, the seat of a vehicle. Because uh, it won't go well. That's why we have a repair tool. Alright, let's actually find the proper cave entrance, shall we? Instead of just uh, just guesstimating our uh, our entrance there. Where is it? Oh, why is it why is it done this again? I'm getting really uh, getting really bothered by the the beacons just disappearing. So I guess it's like when you're in the vicinity of it, it's just it's just disappearing. That doesn't feel right. Where where is it? Because like you look at you look at your beacon manager, and um, it's here, right? But it doesn't it doesn't come up. It doesn't come up. And signal at life pod 17, signal at life pod 3, they're, they're just disappear. Um, 
I would like the ability to manually turn them off. Oh, Jesus. I'd like the ability to manually turn them off. But the, them automatically turning off is kind of bugging me. Because now I kind of need to just guess. Uh, I need to f just find it in this place, you know? So we'll look for a little cave entrance and I guess we'll... We'll find it eventually, but it is... It, it is around this place because I remember this area. It's finally popped back up again. So, oh God, I just need to keep this direction in my sights. It's right here. This is where it is. Now I just need to get this thing to just not go away. Keep your eyes on it. And I need to find an entrance. So it's in the southwesterly direction. 300 meters gone. I'm the, the, the fish thumping against the, the exterior of the sea moth here. Okay, uh, let's see. Do we... Ha okay, I think we can go down here. Yes. I found... Oh, I found it. There it is. We're back, baby. Maximum depth reached. Hull damage imminent. Whoa, 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 Maximum hull depth reached. Oh, good. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. It can go a maximum of 200 meters. Okay, Jesus. 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Okay. Okay, how to solve that issue? Don't go past 200 meters. God, I was scared for my life. All right. That's that's fine. That's cool. And then we can just like swim on back to the uh, to the thing when we need to. Now, we do know that there's a PDA to pick up in here because we picked up a PDA before we died last time. So, oh, there's actually multiple. Look at all this stuff that I can get. We're wasting precious oxygen. God, this takes so long to scan. My precious oxygen. Give me that. Give me that. I've been stung. Ah, I've been, ah, ugh, I've been stung to... Oh, I just died. I didn't realize that my health was going down so rapidly. Oh, I didn't realize that my health was going down so rapidly while getting stung. I didn't even notice that. God, I should have been paying attention. Oh, no. Oh, no. Where's my Seamoth? I'm assuming my Seamoth is, uh, is all the way that way. Is all the way that way? Oh no. Okay, hang on. That's awful. Um, that's a mistake. The good thing is, I saved my game, like, right around that time. Yeah, my Seamoth is 578 meters away. Damn. Alright. Sorry, radio message. You will have to wait. You will have to wait. Because I saved my game. <laughs> I am <laughs> reloading. Survival. That's a good way to do it. Welcome aboard, Captain. Welcome aboard. Thank you. I was just here. All right. Um, all right, we've got a radio message back. Uh, when we get back home... <laughs> when we get back home, there's a radio message waiting for us. Don't get stung by jellyfish, guys. Um, you will uh, You will die. Um, I wonder if I, had the, if I had the propulsion thing, right? I'd be able to deal with that, wouldn't I? If I had the propulsion thing, we could deal with that. Um, and yes, I am going to utilize, if possible, um, the ability to save the game before making some risky journeys, because I just feel like that's that is good. I feel like that is good. At least for now, while I'm a, a big sp underwater baby. All right, don't go more than two hundred meters in. Alright, also don't get killed. I've got a, I've got a first aid kit. Just need to be, you know, a little better. Oh, Jesus. Don't get attacked by the... What is this? Nuclear reactor fragment. Nice. Uh, oh, God! I said don't get attacked by that. Jesus. Oh, I can actually scan it this time. I actually thought that it had left me alone. Turns out it had not left me alone at all. 
and it was actually hounding me. God, that's terrifying when it grabs you. Let me scan you, you bastard. Why can't I... It let me scan it briefly, didn't it? Like it said, crab snake, did it say on my screen? But like, I can't. Oh, there we go. Fucking finally. <laughs> oh God, you, the, the, risk I, the risks I have to take in order to scan this fucking thing. I'm going to die. All right, hold on. This is sometimes in the name of science, you must sacrifice your life. Got it. Get out of here. Get out of here. We're going to drown, mate. Oxygen. Quick. Oh, ow. Get in. <laughs> I'm really good at this game. I'm really good at it. All right, I've got oxygen. We're good. I've still got a first aid kit if necessary. And I scanned the crab snake. An absolute, just beautiful sequence of events there. I'm really good at this. All right. This life form appears to live in symbiosis with the local flora. All encountered specimens have been located within 50 meters of jelly shroom flora, frequently within the plants themselves. Uh, the crab snake has two pairs of fangs and one larger claw on either side. It plunges these claws into its prey, locking them in place while the inner jaw tears through the flesh. Jelly shroom symbiosis. They provide the perfect lair from which to ambush their prey and protect their young. The presence of crab snakes likely deters herbivores from feeding on the jelly shroom itself, thus ensuring the relationship continues. Uh, crab snakes display territorial behavior when threatened, patrolling the cave systems in which they reside. Avoid them. Yes, avoid them. <laughs> Um, life pod three crew log. Oh, I didn't read this. Hold on. You really think it'll carry two of us? Your regular sea glide tows a mass of 80 kilograms at over 30 kilometers an hour. The power cell rig to this one should double that. You think there's something out there that's faster? Oh, sure. And that's assuming it doesn't overload three meters from the life pod. You're calm about this. I'm seeing the engineering problem. If I stop seeing the maths, I'll be terrified. <laughs> Great. <laughs> nuclear reactors. We make a nuclear reactor. Is ideal for energy intensive operations such as self sufficient colonies, supporting more than 20 people, industrial outposts operating multiple docks and heavy machinery, research stations housing live specimens. Nice. We can make Chernobyl happen uh, on this planet. That'll be exciting. I can't wait. All right. Maybe let's see if I can be cheeky and scan a jelly shrew. Maybe a smaller one. Scan a small one. Perfect. Oh, PDA. These conniving corporate bourgeois inbred incompetent self-absorbed jerks don't have a damn clue. The kid's not so bad. He's even useful. But I swear, everything that comes out of his father's idiot face is a narcissistic lie. He wants to stay in this cave. His problem. I'm the one doing the heavy lifting. When sea monsters are hunting you, you don't hide. You hunt the sea monsters. Then you build a bigger boat out of sea monster bones and you hunt bigger monsters. Keep going until there aren't any monsters left to hunt you. I'm going deeper. I'm gonna find what shot us down and I'm gonna tear its damn heart out. I started the prep work. The kids taught me how to make enameled glass. I've started stockpiling metal ores to build myself a sea moth. I'll raid the indoor grow beds before I leave. Damn, okay. So good information on how to build a sea moth. Uh, I've built one already, though, so that's good. Um, all right, useful stuff nearby then, which is good. Okay. Just gonna replenish my oxygen. I'm glad that we can just replenish our oxygen in there and then put the headlights on. Okay, and I think it's radioactive down here, so I put my other mask away anyway because it's pretty much radioactive everywhere. Now I'm wondering if this is like if we're not able to really set this place up, you know, ourselves. Okay. 
Oh god. I'm assuming not. Alright, let's try not get stung. I thought it might get claustrophobic living underwater. Father feels it is. He'd tell me it was childish. But I stare out of the window and sometimes I think how lucky I am to see this world up close. Back on the island, I wouldn't have believed the creatures that live down here. The fish, they glow. There's one that's 90% eyeball. Snakes twice the length of a habitat compartment. Certainly, it's not all friendly. Most of the plant life is toxic. I learned that the hard way. But I've managed to coax some marble melons into growing indoors. And when they don't cover our dietary needs, well, we eat the fish themselves. It's a bit gross, but it's nothing they wouldn't do. I've been attempting to document my findings. Father approves. He says understanding is power. That the more we know about this planet, the more we can use it to our advantage. I'm just doing it because it's fun. It's not easy without proper equipment and network access, but the old-fashioned way, observing, taking notes, testing theories, shows me the world in a way a spectroscopic analysis never could. Lately, I've been watching the crab snakes. They ambush their prey as it tries to feed on the mushrooms they hide in. What they don't eat settles on the seabed, which fertilizes the mushrooms, which feeds the herbivores, and so the chain continues. Coevolution gives me the fuzzies. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Um, we're going to want to scan everything that we can in here while we're in here. Probably would have been a good idea to bring uh, another oxygen tank with me as well, even though we've got the sea moth here, just because it's like, god damn. Oh yeah, I, I have to scan the multi-purpose room again. Alright, we're gonna drown. Ugh, try not to get stung. Try not to get fucking eaten. No! Try not to get eaten. <laughs> It's just going to be a constant back and forth of this. I love it. Yeah, I'm going to take it as though we probably can't recover this base. It looks pretty fucked, but we'll have to maybe... This is a good way to like learn how to make your own and not repeat the same mistakes, maybe. All right, multi-purpose room. How about that? Oh god, ah, I've been stabbed. Oh god, my health just went down so much. Holy crap. Oh, but it replenishes. There's something in here to scan, but I, I've lost it. Alright, my health does come back after getting stung. So this is what I was just talking about before. I need to like some. There's got to be some form of water filtration. So this base is a water filtration system. So it draws water unfit for human consumption from external source, automatically splits it into cons constituent parts, and outputs consumable liquid water and salts while disposing of any harmful byproduct. It can be built in any compatible habitat module, but has substantial power requirements. The Altera water filtration system: any liquid into pure, refreshing pH balanced water. Yes, sir. Any any liquid. Any liquid. Okay. Any liquid. You can pee in that thing. Alright, we're gonna have to figure out how to make a nuclear reactor, aren't we? Nuclear powered water filtration. We we definitely need to be efficient when we run into this in, into this room and see what we can find. Ah and we don't want to do that because then we will die. Um, I want to get one of these, like, doors. I want to, like, get one of these doors open or something. Oh, God, stop doing that. I'm going to die. This is so treacherous. Um, it'd be nice if we could, like, there's, like, capsules or doors, but there's, like, windows that are busted. There's a PDA. All right, I've got another log. Something incredible just happened. Since we're down here, I had this plan to build equipment and study the life forms we were encountering. But I didn't have enough enameled glass. So, I started looking for a natural substrate that would strengthen the glass we have. And those stalker teeth we've been finding fit the bill. Only, well, we needed more. That's when Marguerite got interested. She actually listened to me. More than I can say for father. And I worked up the courage to talk about my more tentative theories. When I told her they were attracted to metal deposits, that their teeth get dislodged when they pick them up, her eyes narrowed and she dashed out of the room. 
Three hours later, she came back, her pack loaded down with stalker teeth. I asked her about it, and she shrugged and said my theories were good. <laughs> said she had the meeting out of the palm of her hand. I think she meant it literally. She is incredible. She went out to the kelp forest, armed with just a heat blade, and went fin to fin with a pack of stalkers. On the one hand, that is the coolest thing I have ever heard. On the other, well, I hope the stalkers didn't come off worse than Marguerite did. She had a huge gash on her forearm. I don't think things went as smoothly as she made out. And what's the point in surviving here if we have to kill everything that makes it so wonderful? I wish I knew more about these animals. But Father won't let me leave the habitat. Maybe with all this glass, we could build a containment unit and get up close to them. Cool. All right. So this is cool. Uh, and I think that's given us, yeah, it has given us an enameled glass blueprint as well by picking up Marguerite's little PDA. Stalker tooth and glass. Very, very cool. Um, infiltration. So a lot, of, a lot of new stuff that we can make, especially the swivel chair, the most important part. Um, yeah, bringing another tank would have been the smart move to do because at the moment we can really only just take very frequent dives um, in and out and just go back in because of the 200 meter rule but there's we're just going in and out for PDAs I wish that we could like break the glass or something but it's a, it's a little bit of a, of a struggle to do so there's another PDA in here because this is the one that we picked up before we died I think Data box, ultra high capacity tank, band PDA. Integrating new PDA data. Integrating new PDA now. data. Okay. No, I died. New PDA data. New blueprint acquired. New blueprint acquired. Okay, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get back to the sea moth. Alright, we got more stuff. Welcome aboard, Captain. Alright, survivors. Voice log. We're already 200 meters below sea level. You want to go deeper? Look around us, Chief. Water leaking through the hull, water outside the hatch. We're drowning real slow. If rescue arrives, whatever shot us down, it's going to do it again and again until it's shut off. You see an off switch around here, Chief? Why would it any more likely be half a kilometer down? Your kid found something on the scanner. There's something down there. Something that shouldn't be. <laughs> You're mad. I'm going all the same, and I have an idea you two are going to follow. But if you do, be mindful. Your authority stopped at sea level. <laughs> the father seems to be the unpopular one in the group there we go we've got an ultra high capacity tank now we need our high capacity tank and four amounts of lithium we haven't even found lithium once yet we need it for the ultra glide fins as well so these are going to be the two things that we really want so i'll be happy to get these sorted god i love the music that comes in here sometimes there's some really unique and nice tracks in here Oh god, get away from me. Um, I just need to go back for the PDA that we found before I died. Without getting... Why is the... Oh god. Can, can, that, can that fish chill out? I'm inside of a base, you can't eat me in here, lad. I'm immune. There's definitely a lot of a lot more stuff that we could uh, probably scan in this place, but I think that the smart thing to do is to build this high capacity tank and the better fins, uh, and then we would be able to, you know, spend a little more time down here. I've just been caught doing some constant back and forths in terms of surveying this little base. And I think with that one, we are going to actually bring this episode of Subnautica to a close. I've made some some progress. We have a Seamoth, which is very good. I'm, I'm getting a bit overwhelmed and uh, doing my best to 
to deal with this. I'm doing my best to, to deal with uh, this type of game and, and figuring it out. But I am having I am having a lot of fun. I will tell you that much. Is I'm I'm having an incredible amount of fun. Um, did this crab snake die? It died. It died uh, throwing itself into this, uh, <laughs> the base, I guess. <laughs> I'm like, I was looking at it. I'm like, it looks like it's dead. It died by circumstance. How funny is that? We're going to work on building a high capacity tank next time and some better fins. So we'll find some lithium. That's what we need. But I think all in all, this hasn't been the worst thing ever. This has been pretty fun. It's been pretty good. Uh, next time we will explore more. We'll figure out what we can what we can do uh, as we explore the depths of this ocean world. But second episode, so still early days, still figuring it out. But I am having uh, I'm having a fun time, and I hope you guys are having a fun time watching as well. So thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you next time.